Hello, I'm Brian Hewitt from PACB TV, and I'm here doing a Did You Know interviewing Lydia Bavarnik and um, Bella Cartier. So, uh, and they're both a part of Baker News. So tell me a little bit about your experiences so far with that. Well, um, both of us are executive producers of Baker News. Um, I've been doing Baker News since I was a sophomore, and I think the same for Bella. Um, we're seniors now, so we've been doing this for about three years. And um, we do a lot of the behind the scenes work, a lot of editing, a lot of writing, um, constantly filming, lots of different things for skits and features. And How does that writing process work? So typically each week uh, we'll meet either in person or um, virtual depending on what our schedules look like. And that'll happen um, on every Monday and if we need to continue with that writing process we'll do it every Tuesday as well. Um, but usually we'll write the studio script um, every Monday and Tuesday and then we'll figure out like a different day to write the um, feature script. Cool. So. And you do that as a team? Correct, yeah. Every, every writer mm -hmm. yeah, nice. takes part in it. Yeah. Cool. Do people switch off as like lead writer, or is everyone kind of always working together? We really just work together. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so you said you're executive producers. Do you ever do any of the interviewing or any of the uh, broadcasts yourself too? Are you ever in front of the camera? Yes. Um, the first this year, the first week of school, we were the ones anchoring. Um, last year, we anchored the Valentine's Day episode and like sporadically throughout. Cool. So uh, I'm seeing that uh, you won an award at the All-American Film Fest in New York City for um, Best Highlight Reel. Um, so what was that like, going to that uh, award and to the festival and seeing everything? Uh, I would say that that whole experience was definitely eye-opening more than anything. Um, we were extremely, extremely happy to be there. Um, there was like a, what, a three-day thing and um, yes. we would go in and we would watch different films. Uh, we had a lot of our films participate in the festival. Um, we The second day um, was the same thing and then we had awards. And um, I mean, just seeing so many people passionate about what we're passionate about in one room, it was just like, it chills, it was amazing. That's an excellent experience to have, especially yeah. at this age. It's gonna be great to jumpstart you into your careers. Yeah. Yes. Are both of you interested in pursuing film once you leave school? Yes, I am. I'm more interested in, in pursuing psychology, but oh, okay. uh, I can see film being a part of my life. So. Cool. You know, psychology is a big part of film too. You know, you have to, yeah. especially for doing. You gotta know your character. <laughs> <laughs> what is her sign? Yeah, so. <laughs> She's canceled. What kind of gear have you had access to here at uh, Baker News? Typically, we film with um, Canon pocket cameras, but recently we were fortunate enough to be able to have two brand new Blackmagic um, pocket cameras in use. Um, we haven't really been using that for Baker News, more or less for um, other filming because they're so new. Cool. Um, those are the cameras we normally use. We actually have brand new teleprompters that we got this year that have been extremely, extremely helpful um, with anchoring and it makes the process go by so much smoother. Is that it for um, I think so, yeah. What did you do before the teleprompters? Were you just kind of memorizing? I've had. No, it was I've had. And the I've font had. was extremely small. So oh, yeah. the process definitely goes by faster with teleprompters. Yeah, cool. And it would so. like manually yeah. have to scroll. Mm, okay. Is there any way to set it up to automatically do it for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Now, now there like is. We have an app that cool. uh, automatically does it. So. Very nice. Very nice. What kind of lighting do you have? Anything uh, interesting? We just kind of use our um, box lights in there that are already set up. Um, not anything super crazy. Yeah, we typically, like each week, we'll set our equipment up. Like, this never changes mm, um, in, okay. in Studio B. Um, whatever, the lights typically never change. If we have to use a camera, or if we're running out of cameras, then we'll break one down. But usually, like, we like to set Baker News up for the entire year and just let it be yeah. so that um, the process can go by faster on Wednesdays. And I see you have a green screen. Who's the one doing all the keying for that uh, in post? Kelly Rogers, our editor. That is our amazing <laughs> studio editor who refuses to be on camera. Yes, oh, okay. she does all the keying. She is She's a so godsend. She is. She's crazy. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, I was watching some of your videos uh, leading up to this just so I could get a little bit more information. I see that sometimes you go on location mm -hmm. to do shoots too. That must be a good experience. Um, do you have to get location permits, and are you doing anything with uh, the more te like um, form side of filmmaking, getting all the like producing uh -huh. done, or do you kind of just go 
Normally we just go on scene. Um, like our recent episode, Belle and I have a segment called Teen Cuisine and we went um, to pizza shops in Beeville mm -hmm. and we interviewed the owners and the real form of per like permission we had was just like communication okay. with owners. We'd call in advance, ask if we can come in, um, get to know them and they would just let us come in, do our thing, give them um, I'm sorry, I'm like literally like here right now. Like That's publicity okay. for their um, <laughs> shops right. so that the people in Beagle can like. And when do you conduct those interviews? Is that like right after school or? Whenever we can. Is it kind of your own yeah. time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How do you get involved with this program? Just signing up. Uh, so we have an activity fair each year and that's a big part of signups. Um, and you don't have to sign up for everything. You can sign up to be a writer, you can sign up to be an anchor, you can sign up to be an editor. But typically, once people realize like what Baker News is, we kind of just take on every single role and we, yeah. you want to learn more about what each role does. So we'll have anchors come to the writers' meetings, especially if they're anchoring that week, we'll encourage it, just so that they can get a taste of what writing feels like. And sometimes that sparks like a new talent and they're like, hey, yeah, I really like this side of it. Cool. Um, so yeah. So all of you kind of get experience with every different role as much as you yeah. can? Yeah. yeah. Is there uh, any rigidity to that at all? Like, does someone have to do something every time? Or No, we, we're fortunate enough to have such a big team that um, if one person can't or if they don't want to, then we'll be like, hey, let's right. ask someone else. So. Do you all take turns editing different? Typically, yeah. Typically, yes. Yep. Do you have computers um, that you have access to through the school, or do you have to do that on your own systems? We have um, a computer lab back there in Studio B with a bunch of, I think there's six computers and all of them run the Premiere software nice. so we can edit. I personally do a lot of editing for Baker News and I prefer using um, the iPad Pros and the software LumaFusion. I'm just a lot more comfortable with it, familiar with it. It just cool. works really well. So we use either. Nice. Um, do you know about when this all got started, when this program was initiated? Yeah, so this this was started um, three years ago now. Um, it was funny because they started in the middle of the year. Uh, one of our um, alumni, David Tesca, shout out David Tesca, love you. Um, he kind of went up to the librarian at Baker and said, hey, I want to start this thing, this news program. Do you think we could do it? And um, typically, people would wait for the next year, but they were so excited about it that they wanted it to start it um, in the middle of the year. And so our first episode was sometime in January mm -hmm. of 2019. Um, and it's gotten bigger, and um, clearly we won an award in New York for it. But yeah, um, more advanced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, I think these past four, because this is our fourth year, and I think these past four years, we've just been learning from the people that have come before us. I mean, the seniors that graduated last year, we still call them the seniors, because they were such a big part of what yeah. Baker News is. Mm -hmm. um, so They're a huge staple piece for Baker yeah. News last year's seniors. Was this your first year submitting to festivals, or have you been doing that for the, the whole time? Last year, we submitted to our local film festival, the CNY Film Festival. Um, and we placed pretty well there, but this was our first year submitting to like a bigger, like all yeah. American okay. festival. Yeah, we we've won um, pretty much across the board um, for two years in a row at our local film festival. Hmm. So very nice. Um, where would you like to see this go? Anywhere these kids want to see it go. I mean, we're leaving this year, and this is kind of the time to be like, guys. Let's go, like you got this, this for next is, year. Yeah, this is why just, we recruit. Um, yeah. We're aiming towards sophomores, so they have mm -hmm. three years of experience. But um, anywhere that they want to take it, we, we encourage support. pushing the gas pedal this year, like bringing everything as best as it can be and having a team that works as well as ours currently does. Awesome. Um, we'd love to keep that going because we I love this program. Nice. I see that you've got kind of a, an intro that you always start out all your videos with. Who was it that put that together? Uh, our advisor, Leslie Cartier. Oh, yeah. very nice. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, talking about Baker News. And uh, if people have any questions, is there somewhere they can go to find out more? You can follow us on Instagram <laughs> at WBXL <laughs> underscore news. Um, you can email us at WBXL at Beagle.org. You can visit our website, BakerLibrary.org. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter, WBXL underscore news. Our Instagram and Twitter, totally open for direct messaging. Um, with any questions, concerns. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Of Thank course. you. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Brian Hewitt from Hackby TV, and I'm here interviewing a few advisors from Baker News, Leslie Cartier and uh, Melissa Morgan. Um, so, how did you both get started with this program? Um, it started in the 2018-2019 school year. At the time, I was advising a um, tech support group for Baker called the Baker Genius Bar. And they came together with students in our student council group to kind of come up with this idea of doing video announcements for the school. And from there, we had multiple conversations. We spent the fall of 2018 sort of planning what this would be like. And we knew right away that we didn't want to do daily video announcements that were just rote reading kind of bland, mm -hmm. boring things because then it's no different than hearing them over the PA system. So we decided at that point to do a weekly show and it, and it seemed to naturally go well with a Friday airtime because you'd spend the week prepping and then air the program Friday mornings at school. So um, it sort of merged from those two student groups but then it opened up to any student who was interested and we started an application process and an audition process and it grew to basically anyone who had an interest in any one of the fields that uh, students can do like the anchor desk, reporting, uh, writing, editing, um, camera operating, pretty much all the roles. Cool. How do those auditions work? We use Google Classroom, uh, and so students had to join the Google Classroom if they were interested in auditioning, and then once they joined, they would see um, assignments for any of those um, positions that I just mentioned. And if they were um, auditioning for an anchor, they were given a sample script, and they had to videotape themselves reading the script, and then we the um, current leadership would view the auditions and make decisions based upon that. So the two of you have been a part of this since the beginning, since it started? Well, so we've worked together. Um, I teach a class called Literature for the Stage and Screen and I do a huge project um, in the beginning of the year and Leslie like really helped me to make this like one of the best projects that well, I look forward to doing it every year and so we started working together on that and she was already doing Baker News and a couple days a week I would pop in to ask questions about this project and I would see the kids working and I would just kind of feel like, hey, slow down your talking, you're going too fast. Mm. Um, and just kind of giving them some pointers. I have a little bit of theater background so I would kind of bring in that, you know, um, that kind of side of it and just kind of give them, you know, think about seeing the line this way. And so then it just kind of became something that I would just pop in every day because, I mean, when you meet these kids, they're definitely kids you want to be around all the time. They're just amazing students. Um, and so just stopping in, checking on them. And so after a while, Leslie was like, do you just want to be a co-advisor? And I was like, sure, why not? And that's pretty much how it started. So you had a few years going and then COVID hit. How did that impact everything that you were doing, and your processes? It had a tremendous impact. It could have shut us down hmm. completely. Um, in the first year, the 1920 school year, when we were all working from home. We only had a few episodes in the spring and the students at that time shot everything off campus and from their own houses. So you'd see a student on their back deck or in their backyard and then it would cut to another student in their house somewhere. So they only did a few of those at the end of the 2020 school year when we knew we were coming back in some measure for the 2020-2021 school year um, we we there were restrictions in place and the restrictions were such that we weren't really sure that we could be together in a studio there were restrictions at the time about even handling shared equipment so when we went through all of those restrictions, it just seemed incredibly unlikely that we would get approval to be filming on campus. So for the entirety of season three, it was shot in a, a location outside of school on Wednesdays. We kept the same production cycle. We just did the studio portion um, off school grounds. And then some of our features were after school 
which worked out because there were no real um, clubs meeting after school for the most part and students would interview teachers or do skits with teachers and there weren't other students involved. So we, we followed all of the protocols um, that were in place and we made it work in very challenging situations. So I'm sure that brought about some interesting results though. I mean, adapting always produces sometimes the most interesting work, so. Yeah. I think some of our funniest features were filmed right. last year. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, how does the training work? When people join Baker News, are they expected to know things coming in or do you kind of give them a, a debriefing of sorts to, to get them accustomed with all the gear? How does that work? It depends on the role that they chose to audition for. Our editors train under our most seasoned editors. Um, Kelly Rogers edits and sometimes Bella also edits our studio portions. Hmm. Lydia and Bella both edit our features for the most part. So all our new editors are training under them and doing that kind of technical work. Um, our writers meet with our existing writing team and we just kind of bring them into the fold. We have weekly writers meetings where we start to really kind of get a grasp on the script and start to make jokes. And Ms. Melissa and I will step in if some of the jokes kind of cross the line because we have to kind of walk that tightrope in school. Um, but the writers, are, it's kind of just trial by fire. They come in and they just join the writers meetings and get started. Um, Melissa does a really great job training the anchors when they come in because of her theater background. So on, on filming days, she'll meet with them in that area where you saw us uh, okay. early, earlier and really training them to run through the script practice their dictation, practice their delivery, she'll coach them on delivery of the lines and so they kind of just get training as they go and they get more and more comfortable each time they sit at the anchor desk. We're also really fortunate because Leslie and I also run a film class and a lot of the students that are involved with Baker News are in our film class so they're learning different elements of film and not everything transfers over to Baker News but using a camera, being comfortable with lighting and that um, all those, you know, elements of theater, or sorry, of film kind of play into it. And I think a lot of the kids that we have, I mean, and it's growing, our, our class is growing. And so I think it's giving them, you know, the confidence to come in and pick up some of this equipment. Um, and then the kids that aren't familiar with it, they hear from the Baker News kids and then they join this class. And so they're getting all this, you know, this experience and knowledge with it. and. I think we're going to see Baker News grow a lot just because of what, what we've been able to bring into the, the school. It's already grown so much more mm. this year um, than last year now that we're back on campus and um, we don't have as many restrictions in place. So it's evolved a good amount through the years as you've been going? Tremendously. What, uh, what kind of things were happening the first year? Were you still figuring things out or was it kind of quick that you were able to just kind of jump on it and do it? And, you know? The first year, like I said, we, we weren't airing anything until January, so we spent the fall planning, but even with all that planning, it still was a learning curve to come up with exactly what our weekly production cycle would look like, how it would be organized, um, um, some technical issues with rendering and exporting the episodes, and, and at that time we would do it sometimes the morning of, which is really dodgy. Yes. <laughs> so I remember in our, our editing, we didn't have an editing room at the time, and we'd sit at computers on the back of that wall there, and I remember looking at my clock, and, and my watch rather, and we'd have minutes to air time, and it was still waiting to export mm. and just panic. Um, so those are all things we learned to avoid uh, in year one and now our cycle is pretty ironclad and we know when we, we plan out our features a month in advance, we never did that in year one. We were always scrambling. Um, so we, it's just things you learn as you go to make it a much more smoother process. So are all those videos from all the, the years leading up to now, are they all available on the YouTube channel mm -hmm. that you've got? The way the YouTube channel is organized, it's by school year. Oh, so okay. if you go on to the channel, you'll see um, the oldest year is at the bottom and the newest is at the top. Awesome. Well, 
I'm sure we're all excited to see where you go with this. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Got a lot of years Thank ahead you. of you. So uh, congratulations on everything you've accomplished. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having us.